anyone who believes football games were better in the good old days is quite frankly wrong. Their rose-tinted memories as far wide of the mark as a Chris Waddle penalty. <laughs> you see, back in the 80s, when footballers' shorts were tighter than a genie's hole, this is what we had to put up with. <laughs> Games like in television soccer and real sports soccer promised unbelievable realism, but the cold reality was that they were a pixelated mess. With third division graphics and gameplay that boasted all the flair and finesse of an after-school kickabout in the park. You didn't even have to get the ball in the net to score a goal. Still, you've got to start somewhere. It would take another five years for something remotely playable to emerge in the shape of arcade classic Tekken World Cup. The controls were crazier than Maradona's Colombian years, with gamers sweatily palming a trackball to move players around the pitch and a single fire button to tackle, pass and shoot. With its outlandish banana kicks and outrageous sliding tackles, it was brilliantly playable. What it wasn't, however, was realistic. The real kick up the backside for football games was the appearance four years later of Dino Dini's kickoff on the Commodore Amiga and Atari ST. It was a pioneering moment. For the first time, the ball wasn't glued to your foot like a love-struck limpet. Instead, you could knock it around the pitch like Marco Van Basten, threading through balls, spraying crossfield passes to your pacey winger and slamming balls in on the volley. The sequel duked it out with John Hare's Sensible Soccer in 1992, sparking the first real football game fanboy war. Forget Liverpool vs Man U, this was Hare vs Dini. The contrast between the two couldn't have been greater. On one side you had the exacting gameplay of Kickoff 2, and on the other the more casual-minded intuitiveness of Sensible. It was closely fought, but ultimately Hare's game was crowned champion. It didn't last. Such was the pace of change that the once mighty Sensible Soccer's popularity fell faster than a diving Italian. That's disgraceful, really. Elbowed off the ball by US giant Electronic Arts, who broke into the big time in 1993 with FIFA International Soccer on the Sega Mega Drive. It's in the game. The arrival of FIFA heralded dramatic change for the genre, with one button to pass, dribble, shoot, tackle and fondle lingerie models ditched in favour of a much more versatile control system. Football's new breed, like FIFA and Konami's international superstar Soccer, boasted multi-button control systems, giving a more realistic depth of gameplay at the expense of your dad no longer being able to play the bloody thing. Like Messi darting past a defender, footy games have never looked back. The 3D era soon dawned and FIFA's swaggering domination helped spawn a host of also-rans. There were noteworthy exceptions, Actua Soccer introduced polygonal players and suitably solid gameplay, while Libero Grande's solo take on the sport foretold the likes of FIFA's Be A Pro. However, other contenders were more disappointing than a rain-soaked no-score draw, with the diabolical Three Lions, Sony's forgettable This Is Football, and a cringeworthy 3D reboot of Sensible Soccer all rightly doomed to relegation. The beautiful game was anything but. However, there was an emerging talent that stood head and shoulders above its rivals. International Superstar Soccer was arguably the finest footy series of its time, and while Electronic Arts was content to rely on its marketing muscle and official licenses to succeed, Konami made Vieira-like strides to football perfection with every passing year. The mighty EA might have scooped all the official licenses, player names and a perfectly recreated Craven Cottage, but when it came to doing the business, Konami did its talking on the pitch. It's a big kick! Yeah! Goal! International superstar soccer paved the way for pro evolution soccer, Konami's trailblazing masterpiece that redefined the genre. Finally, this was football as we knew and loved it, a gracious and deep take on the game that was a revelation at the time. It was the best in class by a mile, the strutting, enigmatic Thierry Henry to FIFA's crestfallen Adrian Mutu. But with FIFA sitting on a pile of cash that would make Chelsea jealous, EA's juggernaut ploughed on, and at the end of the decade the pendulum began to swing once again towards the US behemoth. A crippling complacency had crept into Konami's game at the time of Pro Evo 5, with new versions of PES little different from the last and a lack of any real technical improvement giving the impression of a publisher determined to boot the ball into the back of its own net. In contrast, EA was investing in its future with more gusto than Man City during the summer transfer window, and the decision to create an entirely new game for the new breed of consoles right from the start certainly proved to be a canny one. By FIFA 08, even the Konami hardcore were forced to concede that EA's offering was giving PES a run for its money. And by 2009, FIFA 10 had cemented its position as the world champion. 
With World Cup 2010 World Cup South Africa continuing the series' rich vein of form and proudly claiming to be the most realistic take on the sport yet, and with FIFA 11 promising to trailblaze further still, it's certainly a far cry from the so-called good old days. And with big changes hinting that Pro Evolution Soccer might finally enjoy a return to glory, the beautiful game has never been so ravishing.